So welcome to our new staff members. We have over a hundred new staff members from this time last year, 50 new teachers, about 50 support staff members that join our Worthington Schools team. So our mission in Worthington is to empower a community of learners who will change the world. We talk about the word empower, it's to give authority to. We want our students to have agency. We want them to have efficacy. We want them to believe in themselves. And so we empower our students. And our community of learners is the almost 11,000 students that we'll welcome to Worthington Schools this year. It's our almost 1,400 team members who commit to pulling on the rope and moving in the same direction to make a difference for our kids. It's the 63,000 members of our Worthington Schools community, our greater Worthington area. And remember, our students live in the city of Columbus, the city of Worthington, the village of Riverley and Perry Township and Sharon Township. They have mailing addresses that say Dublin, Columbus, Powell, Worthington, and Westerville. And here's the cool thing. We're not a country club. We welcome everybody to Worthington Schools. We want to create a community. We want to create a community where everybody feels like they belong, where everybody feels needed. That's the community of learners that we're attempting to create every day by our actions in Worthington Schools. And our students will change the world. They'll do it in big and small ways. Immediately upon leaving high school, we want them ready to enroll or employ or enlist whatever is the path that's best for them and for their family, but we want to prepare them for that next step but they'll go off and they'll do big things. And some of them, like an Anna Gerber or a Juliana Withy or a Connor McDermott, will come back and they'll teach in Worthington. And so our mission to empower a community of learners who will change the world, this is our why. It's why we do what we do. But then we have six expectations for all of us. And our six expectations there are how. It's how we commit together to act each day. It's how we try to pull together 21 different schools and 1,400 staff members, all trying to move in the same direction. Because we make these shared commitments about what's important to us and how we're all going to choose to try to act. And so our first expectation in Worthington, it's, it's our foundation. We want to be kind to kids, because we've chosen the kid business. That's what we're about. We're trying to create an entire organization that's based on kindness to kids, to adults, and to the community we serve. When we talk about kindness, we say, well, what is kindness? Kindness is love in action. It's love in action. And what would each one of us do for somebody that we love? Kindness is loaning someone your strength when they need it. Kindness is elevating our love without lowering our standards. It's not soft. We want to have high standards. We want to be clear on our expectations. Clear is kind, and kind is clear. But in Worthington schools, we stand on this foundation and we say, hey, if we choose to be here, and we've all made that choice, then we choose to act out of love and to try to be kind to kids. Our second expectation is that we're each present. 
So we say be present in this age of constant distraction and immediate gratification. It's never been more difficult to be present where our feet are. And so one of the things I love about this morning is that we get to be present together. That we get to just spend one hour where we're, we're intensely together. They say to win the moment, you have to actually be in the moment. And we can't let our future or our past rob us of the moment that we're in right now. We have to fight our culture today so that we're present, that we're physically present and that we're mentally present. Because as we all know, time is our most precious resource. In public ed, time with our kids is limited. and We want to be present. Our third expectation is that we serve the customer. Public education is the service business. I tell people all the time that we employ staff in Worthington, every one of us is employed to serve students, to serve families, to serve the community. That's the life that we've chosen. And so we wanna create great experiences for others through our actions, our attitude, and our words. And it's really critical, and it's really hard. But each one of us has to be able to step back, and we have to really try to elevate our awareness of the experience that we're delivering to others. It's hard to do. It's hard to do, especially when we're pressed for time, when we're stressed. But our job, in part, is to serve the customer. Our fourth expectation in Worthington is to communicate, communicate, communicate. Last year we talked about clear, concise, compelling. And I was honest, and you know I'm not really good at the concise part, right? Clear, concise, compelling. But when we think about communication, communication is about what is received, not what is intended. It's about what people receive, not what's intended. If there is a gap between what we intend and what is actually received, then each one of us really has to step back and say, wow, how do I find another way to share this message? If people aren't getting it, how do I find another way to share this message? And I want you to know, it's okay to set boundaries. In this 24-7 age of technology, it's critical that we are responsive to the families we serve. But it's okay for you as a staff member to say, and to be really clear, here's when I'm checking my email, and here's when I'm not. And when I'm not, here's where you can find the information that you're looking for. And I will respond to you within 24 hours because responsiveness is critical in communication. But it is okay for you to set boundaries. Clear is kind, kind is clear. I want to share one more thing on communication. So as a staff member in Worthington Schools, you're a trusted adult. So last April or so, I was in a meeting at the Worthington Education Center. When my kids were little, they said, Dad, what do you do? I said, I go to meetings. So I was in a meeting at the Worthington Education Center, and I got a call from my sister. And I don't, you know, get a lot of calls during the day from my sister. And so I'm looking, you know, how you are. I'm looking at the phone, like, should I answer this? Should I not answer this? Is it an emergency? Is it not an emergency? And so I stepped out of the room, and I, I took the phone call, and she's, Really quickly, it was like, hey, did you see the email from Isaiah, my nephew's math teacher? I'm like, no, I didn't see the email. Like, I'm in a meeting. She's like, well, you need to see the email. I'm like, well, what's it say? And she's like, just look at the email. <laughs> so we hang up, and guys, immediately I go negative. So Isaiah in school have had, you know, a difficult relationship from time to time. And so I'm like, oh, crap, are we going to expel him right before he graduates? Like, what's the issue? <laughs> you know, so... Then I'm like in this quandary of, do I go back to my office and read the email, or do I just go back to the meeting? So I jogged to my office, I opened the email, and it's an email from Tyler Hayes. And Tyler just said, I don't know what he said. <laughs> I really don't. 
But like the first line was, hey, I want you to know, Isaiah, my nephew, has been doing great in class. And then it had like five or six, I didn't, you know, it said five or six other sentences. And it, but it was that simple. So I'm like, okay, not getting expelled, this is good. So I go back to my meeting, and literally 20 minutes later, I got this phone call from my dad. Now my dad's in Florida at the time, 1,200 miles from here, and he's calling me, and again, like, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to finish a meeting, but I step out, I answer my dad's phone call. It's like, hey, did you see the, the email from Isaiah's math teacher? <laughs> Guys, this is a true story. <laughs> but here's what I want you to take away from it. Tyler Hayes took five, ten minutes out of his day. He wrote five or six nice sentences. It made a difference for three generations of my family. That's the power you have. When we talk about communicate, 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 never forget that the source of the words creates the impact of the words. And you are really important in a family's life. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Our fifth expectation for all staff is that we believe in growth. What an amazing thing what an amazing thing to have someone believe in you. If you're here today, you can probably think and say, this is the person that believed in me before I believed in myself. And more so, how powerful is it when someone with great influence believes in you? And here's the thing. You are someone with great influence. You are someone with great influence. And so in Worthington schools, we want to believe in the growth of our students, and we want to express that belief to them. Express that belief to them, because we believe in growth. And then finally, on the same, in the same area, our sixth expectation is the same as the first. We book them in, bookend them on purpose because if you remember nothing else from today, I want you to remember be kind to kids because that's what we're about. So being kind to kids, it's not always easy. Being kind to kids is seeing kids not just for the talent and ability that they currently have, but it's seeing far beyond that and having a vision of who and what they could be. We can't see them for who they are. That's not who we want them to be. When we talk about being kind to kids, every one of us in this room has to say, yeah, they're not there yet. But I have this vision that if I partner with them, if I scaffold them, if I help them, if I do little things along the way, if I express my belief in them, then this is what they could be someday. When we talk about being kind to kids, we've got to be able to see not where we are, but where they're, where they're going to be. And we've got to help them get there. So our expectations are really our how. Our mission is our why. Our six expectations are the things that we all commit to to make a difference for our kids.